We're going to start our discussion of the Romans now because we finished with the Greeks. If you haven't yet finished watching the, um, the Greek videos, particularly the Victory or Nike of Samothrace by Smart History Khan Academy, please stop this video and go back and watch that one first. When we talk about the Romans, there are three main areas that the Romans are, dis are, are mainly discussed when it comes to art and architecture. And the first of those three things is in what we're going to be talking about today, which is the Romans' use of portraiture, particularly in their sculpture. Now, it differs from what happened with the, um, with the Greeks, because the Greeks did beautiful images, powerful images of the human figure, as we know, but they were never intended to be actual portraits of any individual, whereas the Romans are going to do specific portraits of members of their family and people in the government, for example. The second area that we'll be talking about the Romans is in their use of architecture, and particularly their innovative use of building materials like concrete and building forms, such as the, the arch, the vault, the dome, to create the incredibly impressive buildings that they did, particularly during the Roman Empire. And then the third thing that we'll be talking about when we, with the Romans is wall painting, and we will look at that in the context of the House of the Veti in Pompeii. But before we actually start looking at the Roman portrait uh, bust that we're going to look at right now, I want to take a second just to lay out a little bit of Roman chronology. So we can roughly divide um, Roman history into two main periods. Um, the period of the Roman Republic began um, after the Romans got their independence from the last Etruscan king. This happened in about 500 BCE, and the Roman Republic is going to continue to about 30 BCE. And then the empire, which we, which can be subdivided into several different periods, lasts from around 30 BCE up to the, the traditional date that has been used um, for a, a very long time, as is up to about 476 of the Common Era, but again, you'll have some scholars give slightly different dates for that. So we're going to focus with the work that we're looking at right now on the Roman Republic, and so a little bit of historical context for that period. It's fair to say that during the Roman Republic, during this time from 500 BCE up to about 30, that Rome was in a time of expansion. However, it is also accurate to say that during this period, they are still a society of hardworking farmers whose values include things like self-discipline and honor, duty to their family and to their country. In order to be a member of the Roman Senate, there was a minimum age. And so essentially what the Roman Senate was, was a council of elders. And so the qualities that were admired during the Roman Republic were all of those that came with age, not with youth and inexperience, but rather with having some years under your belt. What, um, what um, Roman families did was they also, during the Roman Republic, practiced ancestor worship, and they set up altars in their homes. And when one of the elderly, um, one of the elderly family members died, then the practice was to make a wax death mask, um, a, a, a mask of wax from the shoulders up, and then they would place that on the family altar. And that way, these ancestors' spirits would be right there with them to be honored by the living family members. Now, ultimately, what we believe happens is that wealthy patrician families began to replace the wax death masks um, by commissioning marble portraits to be made of their elderly family members. And so the one that we're looking at right here called Head of a Roman Patrician is an example of one of these. This was made somewhere between 75 and 50 BCE, so we're near the end of the Roman Republic. And we believe that these portraits were made by Greek sculptors that would move from place to place to place. Uh, Roman sculptors were mainly skilled at working in terracotta um, um, at this point. And so these marble sculptures, we believe, were made by Greek sculptors. And when we look at this, one of the things that I want us to be able to do is to simply compare it with Emperor Augustus. So I want you to pause just for a minute, and I want you to think of categories, like how is it clear that this person is of a different age from this person? So break that down, and then jot those answers down, and then come back to me. So let's think about what some of the most obvious markers of age in these two works are. This one is clearly much older in appearance than this one over here. This one is much more like the idealized, youthful, uh, prime of life, beautifully proportioned and muscled men that we have seen in images uh, from Egypt as well as from the Greeks um, and the Etruscans. And um, we can see the calm face and the full head of hair and, and the beautiful musculature and um, proportions that, that define youthfulness. On the other hand, this one so clearly is depicted in markers of age. 
Now, those markers of age, um, it looks as though there might be a little bit of hair left on this man, but he certainly has a receding hairline. He's balding. We've got deep furrows in his uh, forehead, deep creases between his eyebrows. We've got these, these folds of, of skin that come down over his eyes. Underneath his eyes are these bags of flesh that sag down. His cheeks themselves are hollow and lined, deep lines coming down from, from his nose down to next to his chin. And he's got this bottom this bottom jaw that kind of juts out. It's like he has an underbite that gives him this appearance of like grim determination and age. So this sort of hyper-realism in which the sculptor is really emphasizing these characteristics that suggest age um, um, make what may have been even a middle-aged man, intention, man intentionally look even older and therefore more worthy of respect. So I guess the question that, that we have to ask now is, why would a family choose to have their beloved family member portrayed like this rather than like this? So think about what we said about Roman Republican values. Pause and see how this might more, more accurately depict the sorts of values that were held during the Roman Republic. Jot those down and then come back to me. When we look at this, it is clear that the kinds, the ways that Roman men wanted to be seen during the Republic is they wanted to be perceived as having wisdom and experience and knowledge. And all of those things only come with age. They don't want to be seen as youthful and inexperienced because those are not the things that are admired during the Roman Republic. And so let's talk about what was done with these marble busts. And this follows a practice that was done earlier with those wax portrait masks as well. When there was a funeral procession, then a family would go to its altar and, and pick up these masks and actually carry them with them in a funeral procession. Um, they did that with the marble busts as well. And so the more of these busts that you had of these revered ancestors, then the more that elevated your family status. Now, the aristocratic patricians were, were, were extremely proud of their ancestral lineage. And so it would be a matter of pride to carry these in processions through, through the streets of Rome. So we will talk next about the Augustus of Prima Porta as a representation of the Roman Empire.